My fellow Australians, Aussie Kozak back with another update. Now again, we're going to have to be very careful so YouTube doesn't censor what we're saying here. So we'll try to be as uh, courteous as possible and as tolerant as possible to the censorship of the Western world. Uh, but one thing I have to mention today is a very alarming development. Now, data has come out showing that in the last 24 hours, a mass exodus of Russian government VIP military planes have actually left Moscow. Now, these are the kind of planes that uh, are used to move VIPs, for example, the President, the Security Council, the Prime Minister, and so forth. Now, they've been shuttling uh, people, and I imagine uh, also uh, VIP inventory items. There's even talk that you know, they're, they're collecting one-of-a-kind artwork and so forth, although that's not confirmed. Uh, but they're going back and forth from Moscow to the Ural Mountains. Now, where are the Ural Mountains? Now, have a look on the map here where they are. As you can see from both sides... There's plenty of Russian territory. It's a very secure spot. And this is the place that was favoured uh, even way back in World War II during the uh, German offensive against Russia. The Russian, the Soviet government actually moved its factories and it moved its uh, uh, vulnerable infrastructure into the Ural Mountains. So it's a natural uh, safe place. Now there are massive underground bunkers in the Ural Mountains. Uh, in Russian it's called the Uralske Gore. Now there are locations there which are designed to withstand nuclear war designed to withstand uh, a mass attack against Russia. The only, reason, the only reason why all of a sudden we could see this movement is if the Russians thought necessary to do so. Now, the aircraft that they've flown over there are uh, Tupolev 2043-300 RSD-3, RUAF A319, Illusion 196, Tupolev 214, so Superjet 100. These are the kind, this is the fleet, the uh, RSD fleet, which is the Russian fleet that's used to service the VIPs. So the RSD is the, is the Russian Special Detachment. And the planes are landing at various locations, but they're all uh, linked to the nuclear underground bunkers. So if there was about to be a war, this is what the Russian government would do in the event of a nuclear war. So either the Russian government have received credible information of an attack against Russia, a nuclear attack. Uh, that's the first option as, the, as to why they've done this. The second option is the Russian government is preparing for a nuclear attack of its own. So they're you know, making preparations and securing uh, the leadership of the country. Third option, the Russians are bluffing and they're doing this on purpose. The, phone, uh, the, tr the transponders on the planes aren't turned off. On flight radar, anyone, you know, any citizen over the world can track the Russian planes. But then again, the Russians haven't been bluffing lately. You know, in the last month, every time Putin says something, he does it. He's not bluffing. So that option is off the table, really. I don't think it's a bluff. Uh, there's more alarming developments. There's an exodus of private planes, private jets out of Moscow towards Dubai overseas. So the billionaires are flying out. Something's going on and it's not good. Now we know at the beginning of the special operation, Vladimir Putin put the nuclear missile forces, the Ervasen, the rocket strategic uh, uh, forces, onto highest alert. So the highest alert they possibly could be on. They're on at the moment. Uh, the Russians are not mucking around. And this is where, guys... Uh, the NATO, the West, they miscalculate what they're doing. This is, this is Russia's borders. This is an operation on Russian territory with Russian citizens, with Russian people involved. Russia is not happy that the West is sending mercenaries. In fact, the Russian Secretary of the State Security Council, Nikolai Patrushev, who is uh, the ex-head of the, what used to be the KGB, he's actually warned today formally, his American counterpart, to back off, to stop supplying mercenaries, stop supplying weapons. You know, Russia has a military doctrine, and as part of that doctrine, they'll be forced to use nuclear weapons in certain situations. We're in a very dangerous time, and the world should wake up. We need to limit this operation to the uh, regions bordering Russia and Ukraine. This could easily spiral out of control and become a nuclear war. The Russians are not bluffing. Can I repeat that again? They've shown that they're not bluffing. Every time they say something, they do it. When Putin says he's going to launch a missile strike on communications uh, you know, and radar towers and TV towers in Kiev. 24 hours later, he does it. When Putin warns civilians, evacuate this area because there's going to be a strike, he does it. When Putin warns he's going to, uh, you know, liquidate a certain area or a certain target or uh, conduct a certain type of military operation, he does it. You know, how many times does Putin have to prove to the West, to the rest of the world, that he's not bluffing? This guy is not bluffing. He's got the nuclear missiles on highest alert in Russia. Something's about to happen. The best thing that can happen here is if the West backs off. NATO needs to back off, back right off, get, stay, the, stay, the, stay as far away from Ukraine as possible, 
people like Scott Morrison are fools.